Hello my friends on YouTube. Last week as I was making my video I heard about the explosion in Sri Lanka. I didn't want to talk about it because uh, things were not so clear on who had done that. Although I had a good notion who had done it, however, you cannot just go falsely accuse people or rather innocent people so I waited and even though I knew you could say 99.9999% it was a Muslim group fair enough it was I have seen many people online they spoke and they criticized and they did a great job, so I'm not going to speak about this anymore. There, there's a lot, there are so many people who spoke about that in details. What I, what I would like to speak about, and I'm calling this video, what do we learn from Sri, Sri Lanka's um, lesson, and what do we teach? Because this is very significant too. What do we learn from the lesson and what do we teach? Because the teaching, if we teach something good, it will help in the future to curb these radicals. Actually, I don't call them radicals, I just call them true Muslims. Because if you examine what they are doing, I want one single Muslim, only one, who can tell me that these people have done one single thing, one. Muhammad and his early followers did not do one single thing like ISIS is doing today, Muhammad and his early followers did not do from killing murdering raping and so on and so forth okay all these things muhammad done so don't blame isis blame the person who paved that road for them let's start what do we learn from this Two things. Number one, any religious person, whether he's Hindu, Buddhist, except for Muslim, Hindu, Buddhist, Jewish, Christian, any religion, when he wants to become a devout person to this religion, his hope and goal or her hope and goal is to become a saint all religions always require sainthood to become a loving person except one religion when you become devout you become a murderer it's not very hard to guess which religion okay so <clears throat> the thing here, we always hear this. This is what we learn. Number one, when something, an atrocity like that happens, all Muslim leaders come up and right away, this has. They tell us this has nothing to do with Islam. These people understood Islam the wrong way. They couldn't understand Islam. And that for 1400 years, people do not understand Islam. Why? Why is it so hard for people to understand? What is so difficult about it to understand? Why they don't understand it? And people like these, uh, let's say Bin Laden, he misunderstood Islam. He's from Saudi Arabia. 
He speaks Arabic. He was born in the culture. He misunderstood it. Who understands it well then to talk to him or her? Okay, so the first thing we learn is Muslim leaders try to polish the image of Islam, but they do not condemn the action of these people. And the reason is. The scholars cannot condemn the action because they know Muhammad, if he had explosive, he would have used it, but he used the technology that it was available to him then, which was the sword, the lance, and uh, what do you call that? Uh, yeah, the spear. That was, that was the technology available to him back then. He used it. But if he had submarines and tanks and uh, airplanes, he would have used them. So now these people use explosive because explosive is available. They cannot use the sword. They will not do much with the sword nowadays. Okay, so the first thing we learned that Muslim leaders come out and they tell us this has nothing to do with Islam. If you read, if you don't know anything about Islam, read chapter 9 in Quran. But 9 verse 29, 111, the whole chapter 9, it's all, it's the last part Muhammad wrote so it is like the last commandments what to use against the infidels and it's just pure murder and killing and slaughtering and so you want to learn about Islam read chapter 9 in Quran Google chapter 9 in Quran or Quran chapter 9 and read it and they try as much I mean if you know Arabic but when they translate the Arabic text, they use, it's not, it's a very dishonest translation. Okay? Because it, they tell you, it says, fight the infidels. No. The word fight, when it is used in the context, context of this particular chapter, is to fight with the intention to kill or to submit them to make them believe that Muhammad is a messenger or they don't believe it but they say it anyway then you can spare their lives so it's you, you, you fight them with the intention to either submit them or they pay you tribute half of their wealth or whatever amount the caliph would say they pay of their wealth as tribute they call it jizya or kill them kill them all right so number one we said we learned they try to polish that rusted image of islam the second instead of condemning that behavior many of the Muslim leaders their concern is about themselves how the Muslim will suffer now is not how the people who have been killed suffered and that their family will continue to suffer how the Muslim will suffer now because of this uh, separated incident They try to gain, it's like a propaganda. Islam is a propaganda machine. They try to gain the sympathy of others, even when they victimize others. And we can see that in the, the Prime Minister of New Zealand. 
when this crazy guy went and he shot innocent people in the mosque and uh, I'm not saying this was good no that everybody condemned that atheist condemned that it has nothing to do with the religion the guy was not religious at all the guy was against immigration so if he had seen me near the mosque and I'm not from like second or third generation New Zealand he would have killed me too he was against immigration but he was not Christian he was not Jewish he was not, he was not Buddhist and when he killed he didn't say Buddha Akbar or Jesus Akbar or like the Muslim when they slaughter people and kill people and burn people they say Allahu Akbar that's Muslim slogan this guy had no religion religion had nothing to do with him he was against immigration in his country of course what he did was wrong I am against certain immigration I'll speak about it later but not like that so the first thing is the the, the, the Muslim uh, will tell you that Islam is so beautiful and this has nothing to do with Islam it has read chapter 9 in the Quran second they will try to gain sympathy of the people to appoint the, the, the Prime Minister Prime Minister of New Zealand were the hijab in support of Muslim how many president or prime minister of any Islamic country wore a cross to support the victim of Sri Lanka the Christian who been slaughtered in Sri Lanka did the king of Saudi Arabia war uh, wear a cross any other Islamic country no no because they know what they have done is something good but they cannot say it out loud so they show you two faces one oh the, they they misunderstood Islam but really deep in heart they are with these terrorists it's very hard to believe but actually th th this is of the Islamic teaching it's something called taqiyya you say something but you mean something else that's what we learn what do we teach what do we teach I'm against this immigration for the Muslim faith because they invaded North Africa they invaded Egypt they invaded uh, Iraq Iran and they destroyed these countries they invaded Spain and Israel and they took over but luckily these two countries managed to kick the Arabs out so they are free and therefore they advanced I hope Egypt and North Africa can kick them back soon I know they will be kicked back but I want to see it soon sooner than later okay so what do we teach here you want to immigrate the hell hole you are living in whether it's Syria Iraq Iran whatever yes okay I remember when I immigrated to the United States I had to sign a waiver that I have no communist activity because communism back then was like uh, well I don't like communism myself but I mean it was a big thing back then so any new immigrant had to sign a waiver that he or she does not have any link to communist groups or communist activity because communism was dangerous during the Cold War 
and they wanted the government wanted to protect the country and by the same token Islam is more dangerous than communism in my opinion therefore you want to come here you want to immigrate to uh, Europe or Canada or United States yes you have to sign a waiver that you do not believe in this ideology of Islam number one number two you have to take an oath that you denounce this religion number three as the person is coming into the country to apply for his immigration put in the airport or wherever port of entry pages and pages hundreds of pages of quran for him to step on them as a statement that this is garbage and they don't mind to step on it and at the end put the cartoon picture of muhammad with that bomb on his head At the end, when he's getting his passport stamp, to stand on top of his head with better to be filthy shoes. If he, if he really fulfilled these conditions, he's worthy to, accept, to be accepted. And he has to be told, he or she, if they are caught practicing this stuff, they will be sent back to the hell hole they came from. Don't bring it to us here, whether it's here is Europe or the Americas or whatever. Okay? And for those who already exist, the Muslim who exist in these countries, as the Muslim do, have them do the same. Muslim, they treat Christian and Jews, it's either Submit by force that Muhammad is a prophet and accept his teaching and change your religion to uh, pay jizya. Jizya is tribute. It could be half of your income. Pay jizya or be killed. But we shouldn't talk about killing. Otherwise, we are on the same level with them. So, go back to your country. The hell hole you came from, go back. So, the existing Muslim in Britain, in America, in Canada, very easy. You come to work, fine. But don't practice this here. And if you want, because you're already in, you have to pay jizya. Otherwise, go back. Don't you charge jizya to the Jews and the Christians? Yes, okay. Now, taste some of your own medicine. Pay us jizya. Tribute. Half of your earning should come to the treasury of this country. Or leave. Close all mosques. We have to take really radical, uh, I am radical, but sometimes you have to be radical to confront this radical ideology. There is no halfway and you have to be nice. I don't believe in nice. We have to take the needed actions. And I believe this is needed. And I hope somebody who is in government authority can listen to that. I, in my opinion, honestly, this is the only way. Thank you very much, and we hope to hear from you. And I'm sorry this video, I made it late. I was busy, I'm sorry. Thank you.